Hi, this is Randy. Welcome to my channel, Omega Times, the end times. And I believe that's what we're living in right now. If you would do me a favor, if you would please subscribe to the channel. There's a little red button down on the right-hand part of the screen. If you would click on there and subscribe. If you would give me a thumbs up, then you like it. And if you could share it with a friend, it would really help me out. I need to get to 1,000 subscribers or YouTube won't push my product out that I'm sharing with you today. Today we're going to talk about failure does not define you. Failure does not define you. I'm going to read Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For in it the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. Our faith defines who we are, not our failures. All right, in life, everyone's going to fail. If you don't teach your children when they're young, I taught my children, you're going to fail more than you succeed. You're going to have to face adversity and failure. If you ever want to be uh, accomplish anything in life, you've got to learn to overcome your failures and realize they're going to happen. And so it's tough, but the reward at the end, my daughter-in-law, which I call my daughter, from South Africa, Maurice, beautiful young lady. She went to nursing school with six children at home, working a job almost completely full time and going to college. She just graduated last night. I was so proud of her. I, I couldn't hardly, my buttons would have busted off my shirt if I would have had them. I was so proud of her through, through raising six children, helping raise six children working a full-time job, and going to college at the same time. What a remarkable woman. And what did she do? She graduated. She is now a nurse. I am so proud of her. And she went through quite a bit of adversity. She went through quite a bit of failure. Her parents, a lover deeply, live in Africa. And so she can only Skype them and talk to them that way. And everything, and I told her, Dad, I'll take care of her and watch after her. You know, my son, will, her husband, he'll take care of her, but I'll be around. I'll be a father to her while you're there. And, boy, I tell you what, it's wonderful what you can accomplish, but you have to go through some failures. And many times you feel like, I got, I, I'm going to give up. I'm going to run up the white flag. It's over. But you push through, and at the end, what happens? You walk across that stage you get handed that degree, and you're now a nurse. Oh, it's wonderful. God's good. So we need to realize that we're not defined by our failures, but by our faith. As we face up to our misfires in life, we must keep in mind that all of our failures are not sinful. When you fail in life, it's not always because you are a sinful person. It's some things are beyond your scope. For example, uh, back in 2008, the economy was really bad. A lot of car dealers that had been in business for 25, some 40, 50 years, they wound up going under. When did they, when did they start being a bad car dealer? Uh, they've been You wouldn't be in business 25 to 50 years if you were a bad businessman. But the economy went south, and some of them were living right on the edge of the margin, and they failed but many of them bounced back in other areas or whatever they chose to do. They climbed up out of their failure in the ashes and moved forward. Some of them went to work for other dealers. Some of them down the road opened up another dealership at a future time, but they moved past their failures. It didn't define them because they had 40 or 50 years of solid working record that showed that they were more than capable to do a job, but circumstances beyond their control cost them to have to go out of business. I'm going to take a little sip here. Thank you. And so we need to face up to him. Job in the Bible lost his family, lost his home, lost his cattle, lost his children. He committed no sin against God, none at all. But all this became, then his wife came to him to encourage him. Why don't you just curse God and die? That's what his wife told him. 
Sometimes spouses can be a hindrance to you. They're supposed to be a help to you. Help me, you know, help you. But she come to him and told him, curse God and die. Look at all this that's happened to you. But Job overcame the failures that hit him and his household, and he became even richer than he was before, and everything turned around for him. Why? Because he didn't let the failures and the circumstances define who he was. His faith in God is what sustained him and took him through everything. His faith, not his failures, but his faith. I'm talking to somebody today out there that you are really struggling. And I'm not talking necessarily about money, all right? I'm talking about you may be struggling mentally. You may be struggling spiritually. You may be struggling financially or all three or more, all right? I'm here to tell you, don't define your life by your failures. If you had to drop out of school and help your mother to where she wouldn't have to, uh, couldn't make it ends meet, there wasn't enough money and your father died, all right, don't beat yourself up 40, 50 years later because you didn't finish school. What you did was you did what you had to do, and you took a failure and turned it into faith, and I'm going to be able to help my mom out. Or whatever your circumstance may be, God loves you, and God wants you to succeed in life, but we don't all succeed all the time. Look at a baseball player. If you bat 300, you're considered a real good hitter. The further up 300 you hit, even better. Stan Musial had a lifetime batting average after 22 seasons of 331, and that is a really great record. He hit 1,815 hits at home. He hit 1,815 hits on the road. Same as it didn't matter where he played. He hit. I watched him when I was a kid. He was my idol, and he retired at the end of the 63 season. And I was so sad about that. But there was another ball player in the Cardinals I really liked a whole lot. He became heir was Kurt Flood. He won eight gold gloves in center field and was with them when they won the World Series in 64 and 67. And a lot of people thought he cost them 68. But back then they played the uh, World Series during the day now, daytime. And the sun was real bright and a ball got hit and it got over his head and went back to the wall. And a couple of runs scored. They wound up losing, but it wasn't Kurt Flood's fault. All right. Kurt Flood played excellent all year long, but you can't define him by his failure. Another baseball player, Bill Buckner, was in the World Series playing first base, and a little dribbler ground ball hit his way, and it went right between his legs into the outfield, and they lost the World Series. But you got to look at Bill Buckner's entire career, how good he was and all the good things he did. You can't define somebody by one failure, but a lot of people do that. When you bring up Buckner, especially I'm sure around Massachusetts area, you know they, they remember that ball that got through, but they forget all the times he did a real good job, which was 99% of the time. So we need to realize that I'm just giving you some examples because I'm a baseball fan, have been all my life. My dad played semi-pro baseball before he got into the ministry. And my and my dad was a good ball player, and he was a catcher. And he knew the game inside and out. He taught me a lot, and I became to love the St. Louis Cardinals. And I went to my first game in 1959. And, my, and I had a wonderful time at, at, at the ballpark, all right? So I want to tell you something that, you do fail a lot of times more than you succeed, like ball players who pit, uh, bat and they hit 300, but they fail 700 times. Every 300 hits, 700 times they don't hit. So we need to realize it's tough sometimes, but God will bring you through. Jesus was seized. He was convicted. He was executed, and yet he lived a sinful life, sinless life. He didn't live any sin at all sinless, but yet they grabbed him, they convicted him, and they executed him. Why? Because life's not always fair, and because circumstances happen doesn't mean Jesus did anything wrong. He didn't. He did everything absolutely right, but 
it, death came to his door. Execution came to his door. Conviction came to his door. But Jesus lived without sin, and he endured the cross for you and I. So perhaps you failed in the past. Perhaps you've had problems and you've had the wrong motivations or you did things that weren't really godly. God will forgive you. Ask him to forgive you and move past that and give in to your faith. The faith will carry you through the failures you face in life. Failure doesn't always point to sin, at least not always on your own. On the other hand, of course, if you disobey God and don't serve God and you do things that are stupid, then the Spirit will let you know that you've done something wrong and that you failed the Lord, you failed yourself. You will never have peace in your heart or in your life until you confess, till you repent, which of course is the Bible way of saying that you acknowledge your failures, but you move on past your failures. You ask God to help you and he will. You can look at the perfect forgiveness of God, and God will help you make you better person than you was when you started. God will make you a person that can get past their failures and deal with your faith in God. Have faith in God. We're going to talk about some famous people here. Let me take one more sip. We're going to talk about some famous people here that face failure. Steve Jobs, you ever heard of him? When he was in his 30s, the company that he created fired him. During the, his time away from Apple, he co-founded a computer company called Nixt, which was later acquired by Apple and launched the Pixar Animation Studios. When he returned to Apple 10 years later, he brought the world the innovations of the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod, all this, and he took over the company again and was one of the richest men in the United States. Why? Because he didn't let his failures or them pushing him out keep him down. He didn't go home and have a pity party. If he did, it was one night and then it was over with. He got back to work and he worked really hard and look what happened to him. In 1919, Walt Disney, a guy from Missouri, just where I live at, he was fired from one of his animation, animation jobs at the Kansas City paper. Disney was uh, acquired a laughogram and an animated studio that quickly went out bankrupt and he lost all of his money and his business did not work out. Then he moved to Hollywood and began a place called the Disney Brothers Studio with his brother. The rest is history. Look at all the Disney parks and what Disney has and all the money that they're worth. But he filed bankruptcy. He had a business fail. He had a guy fire him from a newspaper job writing cartoons and said, you have no inspiration. You ought to get out of this. You don't know what you're doing. But guess what? He became famous anyway. Fred Astaire, a great dancer, played in a lot of movies. At one time was considered the best dancer in the United States. He was told you'll never amount to anything. You're never going to be a good dancer. You don't, you, you don't dance good. But if he'd listened to them, he would, he would have been working somewhere else. But he stayed true and pushed on and one of the best dancers that was ever in Hollywood, Albert Einstein. He, he didn't speak fluently or plainly till he was nine years old. He, he had a problem there. And he was expelled from school for his rebellious nature, his teacher said that he was just a daydreamer and he wouldn't amount to anything and told his parents, you know, he's going nowhere. He has no vision. He has no nothing but daydreaming and he's never going to amount to anything. Albert Einstein. All right. Uh, you can't do much higher than this guy. This guy's brilliant. Didn't even t talk good until he was nine years old, but he overcame his adversity. He came, overcame his failures and he had faith in himself and what he could do, and he accomplished a lot. Vice President Dick Cheney served two year two terms as Vice President of the United States. He flunked out of he flunked out of Yale University not once but two times. He failed out of the university, Yale University. All right, but what happened? 
He became vice president of the United States, served two terms, became a successful businessman, failed out of college twice. You're not defined by your failures. You're defined by your faith, your faith that carries you through problems. Let's talk about an entertainer. Don't even need to use his last name, Elvis, all right? Now, I'll tell you something real quick. We went down there in 1976, a friend of mine. We were taking a vacation down there through Tennessee. He was still alive. There was no tours or anything. He was out of town on a tour, and his uncle and me got to visit, and he found out that my dad was a Pentecostal preacher, and his family was Pentecostal. So he said, we got to wait till we get a lull. There ain't nobody here. I'll let you in. So when they got a lull, he let me and my buddy in. He locked the gate. He told me, you can go up to the front of the house, take all the pictures you want out front. Just don't go up on the steps or go past the front of the house. And of course, when we got up there, I kept hearing something. Every time I knelt down to take a picture or whatever, and I looked up and there was a camera following me on a pole. And it was following me. Then a guy came out from behind the house, standing there like this. And he had a gun strapped on him like detectives were. And he stood there and I said, hi, how are you? And he didn't acknowledge me or anything. And so when we got back down, there must have been 200 people at the gate. He said, I can't let you out. He said, if I open the gate, they'll think you're related to him or something. They'll give you a lot of problem. And he said, then they'll try to push through. But just stay a while. And he went in his little guard shake and got a cooler out, gave us a Coke. He got a Coke. He gave us a sandwich. We sat down in lawn chairs. We were there for three hours visiting with his uncle. Had a great time. I came home. Nobody believed me. You can't get in there. They don't allow you to get in there. You know, that, that's a private property. But when the film came back that we sent in at Walgreens, and well, two weeks later we got it back, I took those pictures of work and the church, and boy, everybody changed their tune. Why? Because we got an Elvis was told by his manager, Jimmy Denny, you ain't going nowhere, boy. He told him that you ain't going nowhere, son. Elvis was told that he would not succeed and that he ought to go back to driving the truck at the electric company. Well, guess what? He sold 1 billion, 100 million records, more than anybody in the world, and he's still selling them today, 45 or 48 years after his death. So he took his adversity telling him he would never succeed and he ought to go back to what he was doing, and he pushed through, and look what happened to him. Sidney Poitier, wonderful actor. I love almost every movie he played in, a real good actor. He was rejected by the American Negro Theater. They rejected him. After his first audition, Poitier that was told by the casting director that don't waste my time anymore, don't waste other people's times. You need to go out and get a job as a dishwasher or do something else for a living. All right, but Sidney Poitier didn't take that. Not well. And he went on and pushed through it and then became a successful actor, a great actor, and everybody knows who he is, but he didn't let that stop him. He pushed through and became a successful actor and became very famous and was really good at what he did. So you need to realize that you cannot accept everything that everybody tells you that for a fact, because it's what God says. It's your faith that carries you through. Not your failures, your faith. Talk about one last famous person and then we'll stop. I do have a, a, a printout of it on my family tree. I don't, I'll have to figure out how to scan it and get it on here sometime. But on the family tree, it comes down like this. This lady's up here and it comes down like that. Right next to me is a picture of a guy by the name of Babe Ruth. Me and him are on the same level of the family tree. Right above him is his dad. Right above him, me is my dad. And we're right there. So he's a distant cousin of mine through the family tree. Babe Ruth, all right? And I, I loved the guy. I did before I even knew that. If I'd have known it when I was a kid, all my friends, boy, I'd have been bragging about it when I was a kid. We all loved baseball. We all played on baseball teams together. And I had no idea. I, but the one thing that was really weird, I always wore number three. I love three. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I guess. I love three. I wore three on my basketball uniform. I wore three on my baseball uniform. I wore three on my softball uniform. Did my whole time I played uh, when I was a kid, all the way up till I got married when I was 27. I was still playing baseball and softball, still wore number three. Babe Ruth's number was three. 
But of course, I'm I'm nothing, and he was one of the greatest players that ever played. He set records for the most home runs in one season. In one season, he set a record, and he hit 60 home runs while striking out 1,330 times. But he set the record. Everybody was more excited about the home runs than they was the strikeouts. But he hit 714 home runs in his career. And I'll tell you what, he didn't do it on Gatorade. He didn't do it working out in the gym. He didn't do it by being a, a bodybuilder. All right, he ate hot dogs. He drank beer. He had a pretty good gut on him, but the guy could hit. And to give you a, a quick example, Henry Aaron broke his record. But Henry Aaron had 11,900 at bats. Almost, well, maybe it was a little over 12,000 at bats, right around there, 12,000. And Babe Ruth hit that many home runs in 8,900 trips to the plate, 8,900. And he was he had to bat at least 3,000 more times than him to hit the same amount of home runs. Am I taking anything away from Hank? No, Hammer and Hank's a great player, always will be. He didn't take steroids. He didn't cheat to get to the home run levels that he got to. He did it legitimately and earned it. And so did Babe Ruth. They didn't juice themselves up. And they played in a dead ball era where if you threw a baseball and they hit it down the third baseline and hit the wall, bounced off, they threw it back in. They pitched with they pitched to that ball until it got knocked out in the sands. And they pitch it over and over and over. They didn't give you a fresh, brand new ball every time. And so he accomplished all this and became one of the greatest home run player, hitters to ever play the game. But he did not, he was not defined by not having his mother around when he was growing up. He wasn't defined by being raised in an orphanage for quite a while, by working in his dad's saloon and sweeping the floor and taking the trash out and doing whatever he wanted to do, a gopher and all that. And many people said, you know, you don't have a mother. His dad doesn't really watch him good, and he's been the orphanage. He'll never amount to nothing. Guess what? He didn't take his failures and build his life on his failures. He built his life on the faith that he had in himself that he was going to succeed and move forward, and he did and became one of the greatest home run hitters to ever play the game. Look it up yourself. They got the stat books. It'll tell you how many at-bats you need to hit a home run. He's got the best one, 714 and less than 9,000 at-bats. So be like Joe. Don't let all your failures bother you. Don't let your failures define you in life, but you will succeed in life if you live by faith. The Bible, the Lord tells us to walk by faith. So use your faith and realize that in life, you will fail more than you will succeed. But your successes are so good and so sweet, you can define yourself by your faith and not by your failures. I hope this helps somebody today. If you're feeling down, you're feeling all alone, you feel like you're just nothing, you feel like I lost a business, you feel like you, you didn't succeed. We're going through rough times in our country right now, financial. A lot of people are struggling. So you need to keep the faith. And remember, the Lord said he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. He would go with you till the end of the world. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I don't know how much more you can ask out of the Lord than that. Put your faith in God. If you're not serving God, ask God to come in your heart and forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come in your heart and make you a new person in Christ Jesus. And he will. And then live a life for the Lord and build your life on your faith, not on your failures. God bless you. I love you. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Please look at the subscribe button down on the right-hand corner of your screen. Hit it. All right. Hit thumbs up and share it with somebody so that it will help me out because I want to push the gospel out to people. I'm not here to fleece people for money. I'm not going to tell you, you got to send me a certain amount of money and I'll pray a special prayer over you or I'll cut a piece of my shirt up and send it to you in the mail. It's all hogwash. That's snake oil. I'm not talking about that. Right? I'm saying 
I want to reach people to let them know that God loves them, no matter what they're going through right now, no matter what their failures are, they can still live by faith and follow the Lord by faith. Thank you for your time. This time till next time, Randy Old Rev May signing off. You have a wonderful day and I love you and thank you and share this video.